Pre-calculus video lecture number six on the graph of a function. So definition, the graph of a function is the collection of points, x, y, that satisfies the equation y equals f of x. So we're going to look at some examples, how to analyze the graph of a function, obtain information about the function, etc. So for the first example, we're going to use the given graph of the function f to answer the following questions. First question is find f of 0 and f of 6. So remember, the value inside the parentheses, that's your x value, right? f of x. So basically what they want to know is what is the y coordinate on the graph when x equals 0? So you come to your graph, you find where x equals 0, and the y coordinate is 0 there as well. So that means f of 0 is equal to 0. Similarly, f of 6, again, 6 represents the x value. So you come to the graph, find where x equals 6, and then read off what the y coordinate is. So again, f of 6 is equal to 0. Okay, more of the same in part b. Find f of 2 and f of negative 2. Okay, so 2 represents the x coordinate. So f of 2, find 2 on the graph, not on the x axis. So on the graph, when x is 2, y is equal to negative 2. So f of 2 is negative 2. And then f of negative 2, I'm going to find negative 2 on the graph. The y coordinate there is 1. So f of negative 2 is equal to 1. Very good. All right, is f of 3 positive or negative? So again, let's come to the graph, find where x is equal to 3. So that would be here. Now, is the y value, is the function positive or negative? Well, since the curve lies below the x-axis, that means f of 3 is negative. I don't know exactly what value it is, but I know it's below the x-axis, so it's going to be negative. Again, same idea. Is f of negative 1 positive or negative? Okay, so where's negative 1 on the graph? When x is negative 1, we're somewhere over here. I don't know what the y-coordinate is, but it doesn't matter. That part of the graph lies above the x-axis, so f of negative 1 is positive. Okay, good. Now, for what values of x is f of x equal to 0? So remember, f of x represents the y value. So they want to know for what values of x is y equal to 0. So y is equal to 0 on the x-axis here. Okay. So what are the x values at which the graph or the function is equal to 0? Can you identify them? 1 is here when x is 0. Again here when x is 4, and then again here when x is 6. So I'm going to list those three values out. When x is 0, 4, or 6, f of x is 0. Good. Part f. For what values of x is f of x less than 0? So don't worry, we've got the graph again over here, all right? Um, so for what values of x is f of x is the function less than 0. Well, graphically, that would mean that the curve would lie below the x-axis. Yes? So where is the function or the graph below the x-axis? Well, from here to here. And it wants me to list all the x values where that's happening. Well, there's infinitely many x values. I can't list them. This is different than the way we gave the answer in part e. So you're going to write out an interval or an inequality representing those x values. So notice f of x has to be strictly less than 0, so I'm not going to include the endpoints where f of x equals 0. f of x is less than 0 for all x's that are between 0 and 4. Right? Or if you were to write this in interval notation, you would use parentheses 0 to 4 that way. Very good. All right. Next part, G, what is the domain of F? So the domain represents all of the X values that the function takes on. So go all the way to the left, right? X values move left and right. So go all the way to the left. What's the smallest value of X that you see the graph attain? It's a negative 4, yes? 
and then go all the way to the right. What's the largest x value? It's six. Both of these are part of the domain, so I'm gonna include them. And is anything missing in the middle? No, doesn't look like it. So the domain is gonna start from negative four all the way up until six. I'm including those endpoints, or if you wanted to write it in interval notation, then you would use brackets, negative four to six. Very good. Now we're looking at the range. So the range describes the set of y values. So this time you're gonna look vertically. You're gonna look up and down, okay? So what's the lowest or the smallest y value that you see on the graph? It happens right here when y is negative two. Now go up, what's the largest y value you see on the graph? Up here, right, where y is equal to three. And then you check, is there anything missing in the middle? Is there a reason why I would have to remove anything from the range of values from negative two to three? No, nope, everything's filled in nicely, okay? So that means the range is gonna go from negative two, now be careful, this describes y values, yes? Up until three. And I'm including negative two and three because those are actually points on the graph, right? If one of them was maybe an open circle, then I wouldn't include it. Or you could write this in interval notation from negative two to three. Make sure you put those brackets, okay? Good. Part I, what are the x-intercepts? So the x-intercepts, we got them. Here at zero, zero, four, zero, six, zero. Always list them as ordered pairs, okay? And then what is the y-intercept? We've only got one, zero, zero. Anytime you have zero, zero as an intercept, it's gonna be both an x-intercept and a y-intercept, right? Good. How often does the line y equals negative one intersect the graph? So let's graph the line y equals negative one, horizontal, yes, right here. How often does it intersect the graph? It crosses through here and here. They didn't ask me to say where, just how often. So how many times was that? That was twice. All right, how often does the line x equals one intersect the graph? Now x equals one, oh, excuse me, no, stay there. X equals one is a vertical line. So that's gonna go through the graph maybe here. How many times does it intersect the graph? only once. It better only cross it once because we're talking about the graph of a function, right? If it crossed through more than once, then this wouldn't be a function. It would fail the vertical line test. Okay, for what value of x does f of x equal 3? Okay, so remember, f of x, they're telling me y is equal to 3. What is the x coordinate where y is equal to 3? Okay, so come to the graph, look where y is three, and maybe this point right here stands out, it's where x is equal to five. They only want the x value. And then again, for what value of x does f of x, or think y, equal negative two? So when y is negative two, we're right here. What's the x coordinate? It's two. Very good. Okay, now I briefly mentioned the vertical line test. We're gonna talk about it again right now. So a set of points in the xy plane is the graph of a function if and only if every vertical line intersects the graph in at most one point. So you could have a vertical line actually and it never crosses the graph and it would still be a function, but if it crosses it more than once, nope, it's a no-go, not a function. So let's look at a couple examples here. It's asking us to determine whether the graph is that of a function by using the vertical line test. And then if it is, you're gonna use the graph to find A, the domain and range, B, the intercepts, if any, and then C, any symmetry with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, or the origin. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna use the vertical line test. And look at this example here to determine whether or not the graph represents a function. So just take your pencil across. Do people even use pencils anymore? Your stylus. And see if it crosses the graph more than once ever. Just You can just imagine it. You don't have to draw actual lines. So no, 
No vertical line will cross this graph more than once, so that means it passes the vertical line test. So yes, it's a function. That means we get to do parts A through C. How exciting. Okay, so part A, find the domain and the range. So remember, the domain represents the set of all x values that you see graphed, okay? So there's no arrows. I'm gonna assume the graph starts and stops only with what I see here on the paper, okay, or on the screen. So domain, left and right, describes x values. Go all the way to the left. What's the smallest x value that you see the graph attain? It's negative pi. And then go all the way to the right. It's positive pi. And everything is attained in between those values. Nothing's missing. So from negative pi to pi. Notice I put brackets because these are solid points. They're filled in on the graph, right? So they're included. Negative pi and pi are included in the domain. Now what about the range? The range describes the set of y values. Smallest y value I see is here at negative 1. Largest y value is here at positive 1. So the range goes from negative 1 to 1. Good. Okay, part B wants the intercepts. So let's do x-intercepts first. So x-intercepts are here at negative pi 0, 0, 0, and pi 0. We've got three of them. Negative pi 0, 0, 0, pi 0. Always write these as ordered pairs. Please, please, please. Y-intercept. It's right here at 0, 0. That's it. And then last, we're going to test for symmetry. Okay, do we have x-axis symmetry? Is this symmetric with respect to the x-axis? No, right? If I fold it on the x-axis, it's not symmetric. Do I have symmetry with respect to the y-axis? No. But what about the origin? Yes. So to imagine origin symmetry, just reflect your graph about the x-axis and then the y-axis. Or you could do it the other way around, but just do both. And then if you have symmetry, after doing those two reflections, then you have symmetry about the origin. So yes, this passes origin symmetry. Yay. Okay, next example. So remember, we start off by applying the vertical line test. So does this graph represent the graph of a function? No, look at it. Failing the vertical line test. Failing it yet again. What an epic failure it is. So no, it's not a function. And then you can celebrate a little bit. You don't have to do the rest of the parts for this example. It only wanted you to find domain and range, etc. if it was a function. All right, good. Let's look at another example. This time, instead of being given a graph, we're given the equation for a function, okay? And we're gonna be asked questions about its graph. So, our function f of x is defined to be negative 3x squared plus 5x. First, part A asks, is the point negative 1, 2 on the graph of f? So, how would you check? Basically, they wanna know, if I plug in negative 1 for x, do I get 2 for y? for f of negative 1. So let's just go ahead and check. So what is f of negative 1? So I have negative 3 times negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1. So negative 3 times, when I square this negative 1, it's going to become positive 1. So this is still negative 3 minus 5. That's negative 8. And negative 8 is not 2. So no, that point is not on the graph. Okay, easy enough. Part B, if x is negative 2, what is f of x? All right, so let's plug in negative 2 for x. So I have negative 3 times negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2. So again, when I square this negative 2, it's going to become positive 4 times negative 3. That's negative 12 minus 10. This is negative 22. All right, so I answered the first part of the question. Now, what point is on the graph of f? So they want me to write as an ordered pair x comma y. 
So what point is on the graph? Negative 2 comma negative 22. Make sense? Good. Okay, if f of x equals negative 2, what is x? And what point or points are on the graph of f? So this time they're saying f of x is negative 2. They're saying the function is equal to negative 2, the y value. So I'm going to set negative 3x squared plus 5x equal to negative 2. I'm not plugging in this time. Do you see the difference? So when the value is inside the parentheses, you plug it in. But f of x is equal to negative 2, so I'm setting it equal to that value. Okay, I notice this is going to be a quadratic equation, so I'll just move all the terms to the left. So I have 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 is 0. And lo and behold, this one factors. How nice. So 3x plus 1, x minus 2 is 0. And then we get x equals negative 1 third or x equals 2. If you need a review on factoring, I'll link it up here. I have a video on how to factor trinomials. Okay, so we answered the first part. What is x if f of x equals negative 2? We got two answers, negative 1 third and 2. Now the second part of the question asked what point or points are on the graph of f? So negative 1 third and 2 represent the x coordinates of these points. And they both have a y-coordinate of negative 2. So I have negative 1 third, negative 2, and 2, negative 2. Is this allowed for a function? Can you repeat a y-value? You certainly can. You just can't repeat an x-value with different y-coordinates, okay? Good. Part D, what is the domain of f? Well, f is a polynomial. So the domain is all real numbers, which you could write like that, or you could write it in interval notation from negative infinity to infinity. Very good. Part E, list the x-intercepts, if any, of the graph of f. So the x-intercepts, remember, come from setting y or f of x equal to 0. So I'm going to replace f of x with 0 equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. Again, now we need to solve this quadratic equation, so I'll just move both terms to the left-hand side. So I have 3x squared minus 5x is 0. I can factor out an x. And then I have 3x minus 5 as my other factor. And then this gives me either x is 0 or x is 5 thirds. So what are the x-intercepts? Don't leave them like that. Write them as ordered pairs. 0, 0, and 5 thirds, 0. OK, good. Last part of this question asks, list the y-intercept if there is one of the graph of f. So you might have noticed, well, if we have 0, 0 as an x-intercept, then for sure that's going to be a y-intercept. If you have a function, can you have more than one y-intercept? No, you cannot, because then it would fail the vertical line test. Think about it. Here's your y-axis. Here's the x-axis. Okay? If you have more than one y-intercept, boom, it's failing the vertical line test, so it's not a function. But can you have more than one x-intercept? Sure, it'll still pass the vertical line test in that sort of a scenario, okay? Anyways, if you didn't notice that you had 0, 0, so again, you're going to have 0, 0. You could always just plug in 0 for x. So f of 0 would be negative 3 times 0 squared plus 5 times 0, which is still 0, okay? So that concludes the lesson on graphs with functions. Coming up next is properties of functions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment down below and stay tuned for more math fun.